Welcome to Mas Plus Busutil. Welcome. Merci. We can applaud him. <laughs> okay. The only one panelist for this special round table. I'm, I'm the only one to be there this morning. I mean, there's something with this round table. So. You're so brave. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm happy. So, Thomas, you've been the owner and also the founder of Imaginable for 12 years now. Imaginable is a French consulting firm that supports companies in the transition of the economic model. One of the examples of your advice is the multi-life shoe rental solution with the brand Bocage Group Etam. So, tell us more about this. It's Eram, not Etam. Eram. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> yes, um, first, uh, maybe to introduction, I want really to thank Bert because uh, when we started to work on these new economic models and sustainable new models, uh, Mud Jeans was clearly one of the, the main inspiring company that we looked at. And what I'm going to talk about this morning is clearly inspired at was, was what Mud Jeans did and what Bert did, especially regarding two models economic models, which is functional models, which is how you can switch from property to use and going to the lease genes instead of buying it. And the second thing is circular model. It's how you can really try to think in closed loop models. Okay, and so that's what we tried to did with this, which is a boot, a reconditioned boot. And we invent and we co-designed with Bocage, which is a subsidiary of Aaron Group, uh, the first multi-life renting shoe model. Okay, so which means when you go to a, a Bocage store, uh, you can find you can go first first to l'atelierbocage.fr, uh, the website, and then you choose one, two, or three models that you like, and then you go to the to the to the store, to the Bocage store, to finalize your choice, and you have a in the client experience, you s you'll spend one hour with a stylist and seller to choose the the model, and then you have the use of the shoe for two months. After you go back to the store, maximum it's two months. Yeah, it's two months. It's just because we wanted to recondition these this boots uh, and the shoes in France at an economic, uh, reasonable price. And we make uh, uh, technical uh, studies to see when the shoes is being, being deformed. You know, when you wear it uh, long enough, then your shoes it can uh, deform. So we wanted to uh, try to see when the shoe is trying to is beginning to be deformed. And that was about two months. So uh, we said, okay, we need to, if we want to recondition it and give it uh, until four lives, and this is the second life shoes, but we can give it until four lives of shoes, recondition it four times, uh, uh, we need to, to wear it just, just two months. And then you can stop if you want. If you fell in love with your shoes, you can buy it at 40% of the price. Or you can go, go again and rent another uh, pair of shoes and go again every two months. So you have you can still stay in the fashion because you can uh, uh, have the use of more than six pair of shoes instead of buying four, but you're sure that you are sure that th these shoes will have multi lives and that will be uh, in a few months a second hand life platform, a second life platform, and then a third life platform and fourth life platform, uh, where you can rent or buy these shoes. And since we don't have stock enough because it was launched about nine months ago. Uh, so we're still having the, the stock to, to open these platforms. We have opened two stores, one in Nantes and one in Paris, in the Rue de Rivoli, uh, where you can buy those reconditioned shoes. So, and this is uh, the uh, first the new price when you, when you buy them. They're new, it's about 150 euros. Then you can go now in the Rue de Rivoli and buy th those shoes, which are really looks like new, for half of the price. So that's what we did to, f to fight because uh, what... Um, the, the key point for us when we do this uh, uh, innovation, sustainable innovation work, is to uh, get in by the societal and environmental issues. And as Bert really uh, showed it very well, the fast fashion industry is, is really a total insane uh, model, both on environmental, social, or even economic and financial. Knows that all those big groups, textile groups, have thousands hundreds, let's say hundreds, millions of euros who are in stock of non-sold shoes. So it's a waste also, even though on a financial, even Mr. Trump would say it's not a, a good model because it's just insane just to block hundreds of million euros in stock of unsold shoes. So Thomas, how did you get this idea? 
uh, to make the, your business with well, us. Well, because we, we uh, as I said, we entered the reflections with, with Bocage by saying how can we fight this insane model of the fast fashion? And especially the waste of material that we have and how we can optimize these materials and how we can go on a, a leasing model rather than a selling model. So you can have this circular uh, way of optimizing the use of the shoes. And that's how we did. And uh, we also worked also on a, another uh, um, uh, challenge, which is uh, women's self-esteem. And what about the competitivity with this new kind of consumption? I know, this, uh, if you want to rent it, it's 29 euros a month, okay? So for shoes, who, who, as I said, are around 120, 150 euros if you buy them. Uh, uh, and uh, so, as I, as I said, y you can have the, the use of six pairs of shoes. And in, a, in an economic model, the more you uh, get inside the second, second life and third life and four lives, and the more it is good for the company in terms of, of finance. Because uh, the, the, the shoes is totally uh, amorti, is uh, uh, used in, in, in terms of financial things. Totally amorti. Yes, amorti. totally amorti, amortized, I don't know the, the world. And <laughs> then you, you can really, it's a, a very good business model. So you can really align economic model and environmental and social uh, uh, benefits. And do you think this new vision of economic model uh, would be scalable? Of course. Uh, so we tried for six months, we made a first try in 10 uh, shops with 100 uh, clients. And since it worked well, we, we launched in, in last April in about half, about 120 uh, uh, shops. And uh, now we had made a business plan who was, uh, uh, the break even was about 1,500 clients on 18 months. In fact, we reached the 5,500 clients at uh, uh, the end of the year. So we launched now, the, this is this model, the renting model is available in every Bocage store. And uh, it's very interesting that we are now working with other brands of the group. That's also what's interesting, it's the, all, the, all the brands uh, of the Aram group are working on those kind of models now. Okay, so <coughs> um, can you explain, because w when we prepared this uh, panel session, you told me that this kind of new consumption can empower women. Can you explain yes. why? Yes. As I said, it was the second uh, challenge that we worked on. So it was, uh, first, it's fast fashion and the uh, use of materials. And the second one was uh, women's self-esteem. You know, I think there's a lot of ladies in this room. I don't know. Can ladies you put your hands, woman? And yes, the majority yeah, of ladies. This is a girly session. Y usually when we talk about sustainable development and sustainable models, there's a lot of ladies around. So that's a good point. But I don't know if you know it, but when you get up in the morning and look at in the mirror, you have statistically half confidence in yourself than a man. Just because you have at least, I think it's underestimated, twice more social pressure than men. You know many have wrinkles of, of white hair, like me? It's charming. When sort of is a woman, you look like a grandma. Okay, so that's kind of a social pressure that you have that we don't have. Okay, so we try to also integrate that thing, is how the models could help facilitate the self-esteem of women. And how we did that is that we train the stylist cancer, and when you, came, when you come to the store and, and look for the, the choice, the final choice of, of the, uh, your shoe, they're gonna try to, to inspire you and say, okay, is there any model that you've, uh, that you did never dare to, to wear just because you were too model, so you didn't dare to do it. And so, the, for example, the, the nice yellow flashy sandals that you, were all, that you have always dreamed to wear, but you never dare to do it. Well, let's do it, because you don't buy it. You just use it for two months. If you don't like it, there's no problem. In two months, you give it back to us, and you go back to, to a gray or beige or whatever, uh, uh, can use scholar, for carnival. Okay? If you finally say, okay, I'm fine is with, with yellow sandals, then don't worry, we have yellow, orange ones, we have fuchsia ones, pink, and so on. So you can dare it. And it's very interesting that in the first study that we did with the, the, the first 500 clients that we had in these new models, around 10 to 20% that they have actually dared to wear shoes, they would not have done it in a classical selling model. So... 
that's a great thing also. So not too much. As a French consultant, you talk about Eram Group, but do yes. you have uh, any uh, other examples? Yes, the fashion uh, industry? we did that, for example, uh, in uh, not in the fashion industry, but in the cosmetic industry, for example, uh, where we uh, worked on a, a, a model um, that how you can also um, work both on, on uh, environmental uh, issues and on the client experiments, experience. Uh, for example, if you s uh, finalize all your, your products in a special uh, uh, store, I would say, where you have uh, different experiences, but where we are going to, eat, like, like, I'll say, Bert was saying, we are going to explain you all the whether the ingredients come from, how we we had to pay, pay attention to the people who are doing it, and so on. So that's an, another type of example uh, that we're uh, still doing, and um, voilà. Yeah, and what about your vision? Uh, let's, stay, let's say with uh, the fashion industry, do you think is the fashion industry growing faster than other sectors, according to you? Yes, it's very interesting that uh, we are working with many, many sectors like real estate, like uh, cosmetics, like food, which, are, which have a lot of pressure on, on sustainable issues. And what we have seen about the last 18 to 24 months ago is that uh, the, fashion in the fashion sector, I would say, not only industry, is really pushing up. Now, the reason is that uh, the, a lot of big groups, uh, textile groups, especially European ones, uh, had really big problems, you know, since uh, the classical model is not working anymore, since they are challenged by new uh, DNVB, uh, digital native vertical brands. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's a, a question of uh, live or, or die. So, but what is interesting is that we have seen that uh, a lot of uh, brands, uh, both uh, French and European and uh, uh, American also brands, have uh, uh, integrated these new models, rather uh, renting and or uh, recycling and circular model. So I think it's very interesting to see that these, uh, the, the, the fashion sector is clearly taking the lead, that we have the fashion pact with all those uh, brands uh, uh, signing and, and, and engaging themselves in the to, to have a little more attention to, to become sustainable. So I think it's uh, great. What I also want to say is um, the, the what is a very in interesting thing is what we did at Eran Group is that it uh, gives inspiration and energy inside the group to do other things. So, for example, this is sneakers who are eco-social designed. And those oh. shoes were made by four uh, people of the Eran Group in an entrepreneurial uh, um, project. project who after this what we did on that had this idea and said okay we want to go further and we want to work on this project and they really worked on this eco socio design shoes uh, which is called <coughs> Cécile they were crowdfunded on Ulule as you know the, the platform Cécile is the founder of this new project yes the, okay. the, the four, uh, these four uh, uh, people from, Air, from the Arum group and that's what I what we have seen that this the first project get gives uh, really energy and inspiration throughout all the groups, and they also uh, decided to uh, launch uh, a, a whole um, strategy, I would say, which is called Change for Good, and they are pro progressively uh, uh, int interesting uh, uh, integrating all those kinds of new models progressively in all the brands, as I said. So it's uh, rather than doing those CSR corporate strategies that we're working on as consultant, uh, more and more we say, okay, before doing that, let's try to work with the sustainable innovation projects. It will be much more efficient, it will be much more inspiring, and it will legitimate much more your CSR strategy after. But let's work for, and let's prove that throughout those new models we can really uh, uh, invent new ways of consuming, new ways of designing uh, 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 the new economy. And as Bert said it very well, much better than me. We have three minutes. Can, can, can I pick one or two questions from the audience to finish this roundtable? Do you have any questions for Thomas about his new vision model? Yeah. Speak louder, please. I don't hear anything, sorry. Un, deux, un, deux. Quelqu'un peut... Thank you, Bert. Okay, but Bert, maybe you can come here. <laughs> if you have questions for Bert, too. No, I don't think From so. the audience, it's, it's great, too. Thank you. Do you want me to ask? 
Do you ask it in English or in English? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, just I wanted to make something clear because I didn't understand it well. You said that your shoes could have four lives. Uh, yeah, four lives. Yeah. Uh, and so the rent is only two months. So it means that it will be eight months. Mm -hmm. But for example, I keep my shoes for four years. Yes. So is it, it really sustainable? I know. It's a good question. It's a, it's a very good question. Uh, two things to that. Um, first, uh, we are talking about the, the use. What we are looking at is the number of times that the, the shoes will have been used. Okay, because we are looking at use the use of shoes. So it will sh eight months is short. I totally agree. But uh, first, it will be s the shoes in eight months will have been worn very, very uh, a lot of times. Okay. The second constraint that we had is fashion. You know, fashion is turning real, real quickly. So how we can stay and integrate the way that we're still going in fashion. And the third thing is we are not perfect. The model today is not perfect because we cannot say it's a totally closed loop model. So there was an, there an R&D program which have been launched in the, uh, throughout the state, and we have a, a support from ADEM, from the French Environment Agency, to evaluate the model as it is now, and to work, and we have the ambitions to be totally close to loop in about four, two to three years. And there's already two patents that have been uh, uh, created uh, the last month to dis disassemble the shoe, because it's a very complex thing. You see, you have, uh, you have metal, you have, you have uh, leather, you have um, on all sorts of different things. Uh, uh, so to so dissemble the shoe is a very complex thing. So we're working on that, and we have the ambitions to be close to loop in about two, three years. But I would say when you make sustainable innovations, I think, I, I believe that you don't have to wait to be perfect. Okay, if it's already, you're pushing something better than what it was before, just launch it and iterate as much as you can until you have a perfect model. So the model is not perfect, that's clear, but we're working on it. It's a good question. So thank, thank you, you so much, yeah. Thomas.